Well, good morning, morning. and welcome to worship at St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Didi, and I'll be leading in worship this morning. Before we begin, I ask, are there any prayers that we'd like to offer to our God? I was going to say, Peggy, you look like you really want to say, don't be shy, it's okay. And what about her? Just general well being? Just general well being or? We can do that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Seeing no others, then let's begin with our opening hymn, hymn 742, on Galilee's high mountain. Thank you. 
The order of service we'll be following this morning is entitled Setting One and can be found beginning on page 154 in the front part of your hymnals. Please rise for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins then to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. We join together and pray. Almighty, eternal, and righteous God, you revealed your divine word to teach us what we should do and what we should avoid. Strengthen and lead us by your Holy Spirit that we serve you in new obedience here until we come to complete holiness before you in that life to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. 
Our first reading for the seventh Sunday in the season of Pentecost is found in the Old Testament book of the prophet Ezekiel, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. God said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, Do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid. Though briars and thorns are all around you and you live among scorpions, do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. The word of the Lord. For our catechism lesson today, we'll be focusing on the sixth petition. I invite you to read along with me. The sixth petition. Lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God surely tempts no one to sin, but we pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our flesh may not deceive us or lead us into false belief despair, and other great and shameful sins. And though we are tempted by them, we pray that we may overcome and win the victory. Our second lesson is found in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. The word of the Lord. Our Holy Gospel lesson for the seventh Sunday in the season of Pentecost is found in the Gospel according to St. Mark. The sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse, and we read in Jesus' name, please rise. And hear the words of Christ. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. 
Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. The Gospel of the Lord. Please then be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 639. God has spoken by his prophets. let us pray. Lord, give us faithfulness, humility, devotion, and heartfelt hunger and thirst for the spiritual power of the word. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of scripture before us today is found in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who, comp who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not changed. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Heavenly Father, these are your words, and therefore they are the truth. 
We pray, Lord, that you would increase our faith through them. Amen. And dear redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Apart from some family events, the pastoral ministry has brought me some of the highest highs and the lowest lows that I've ever experienced in my life. I have gotten to baptize family members, though I've only actually baptized one of my own children as their grandfather did the rest. But I've also had people tell me they see me as nothing more than a hired employee that they can fire at will if they don't like. I've gotten to be with people as they cross from this life into God's loving arms. But I've also been told by family members of those people that I'm not a good pastor because all I do is talk about Jesus and not enough about that person and the hobbies that they like and want to do. I've gotten to celebrate important milestones and, and days with members and I've broken bread with them at my house and in their own. And I've also had members look me straight in the face and tell me that they never want me in their house. And when and if they need church, they'll show up here. Public ministry is a very great and a very trying vocation. Public ministry is a position that some people admire and appreciate, while others look at the pastor as someone just trying to collect a paycheck and someone that they can boss around and demand things out of that they would never demand out of another person. Public ministry has given me some of my highest moments in life. And the public ministry has contributed to some of the lowest moments of my life. But then I get to a text like the one before us today. And I have to remind myself I don't do this for me. And I don't do this for you. I do this for God. I carry out the tasks of a minister of God's word because he has called me here. And he has placed me here to be your pastor. And he has placed on me the call to serve you. And the text before us today helps us understand this. For even Paul had to buffer young Timothy just a little bit about the call that he has and the church that he is serving. Be strong. Share in the suffering. I endure all things. And why? Because it's not about me. It's about him. It's about who he is and about what he has done for all of us. Therefore, as Paul tells Timothy, so he truly tells each and every one of us that we will suffer like a good soldier of Christ. Man, pastor, you make it sound pretty horrible to be a pastor. Not at all. I'm just honest. And I'm sure all of you can bring back some of your greatest and your worst days to your vocation or even to your occupation. Maybe you got that promotion. Maybe you finally found that job that you were perfect for. Maybe you were able to do more good for those around you once you took a pay cut or even found a whole new field altogether that better suited you. And for all the good we find in our occupations or professions, I'm sure that we also find many troubles or difficulties. The boss who just won't get off our back. The weather that just will not cooperate so we can plant or harvest the coworker who has just a little too much pep in their life and wants to know every piece of information about you before 8 a.m. We all have those struggles, or at least similar ones. But that's not even what Paul is talking about. Paul is more talking about the suffering that we will do in our ultimate vocation, that of sharing the gospel. For what was the great commission of Jesus Christ? Go 
and make disciples of all nations. This is not just a commission for pastors. It's a commission for all of us. Each and every person is to go and make disciples. We are to bring Jesus Christ to our friends, to our families, to our coworkers, to... But we don't. We don't because we're afraid and because we're ashamed of sharing Jesus Christ with others. We fear the rejection that they may place on us. We fear that they might look funny at us. We fear that they might think less of us. We are afraid. We are ashamed. We become unfaithful. We were all tasked with the responsibility to share the gospel, with the vocation of gospel sharer. But somewhere along the way, we walked away from that vocation. Our real life jobs got a little too important. Our eight to fives got a little too time consuming. Our schedules got a little too tight. We just didn't have time. So instead of taking God at his word and doing as we were commissioned, we walked away from him and we walked away from our duties. We walked away from the one vocation to which God has called each and every Christian. The sixth petition, lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God surely tempts no one to sin. But we pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our flesh may not deceive us or lead us into false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins. And though we are tempted by them, we pray that we may overcome and win the victory. Or as one Christian writer put it, I believe one of the main reasons people don't share their faith in Christ is that they don't really believe in hell. Many of us are out of touch with the genuine urgency. The challenge is that many believe heaven is the default destination, when in fact the opposite is true. Paul spends this entire portion of scripture telling Timothy how he is to be ready to be a pastor, how he is to be ready to be one who shares the gospel. What you have heard, commit to faithful others. Be a good soldier of Christ, faithful to him. Remember Jesus risen from the dead. The word of God is not bound. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. And then Paul gives us the trustworthy saying. For if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. As we live in this world, we will suffer for Christ. People will reject us. The world will hate us. Family and friends may not talk to us. Our children may walk away from us and shun us. Our parents may just wash their hands of the whole Jesus thing. Many will do this because sadly many will wind up in hell. They will wind up in hell because hell is a real place. And if they choose to walk away from God and from his son, Jesus Christ, hell will be their final destination. But it does not need to be their final destination. Nor does it need to be yours. For through faith in your Savior, Jesus Christ, you can know that heaven is yours. 
It is yours right now. It is not something that you will get in the future. You have it right now through faith in your Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, you will get there one day, but you already have heaven. For if we die with him, we will also live with him. And as Paul told us in the letter to the Romans, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. And if we endure with him, we will reign with him. We will reign with our Savior Jesus Christ who has conquered sin, death, and hell. And as he is victorious, we will share in that victory. We will share in this victory in heaven when we reign and live with him for all eternity. Never again will we hunger and thirst for righteousness. Never again will we be afraid. Never again will we cry. For we will be with our Savior, the one who willingly gave up his life so that he might buy us back from all of our wrongs. We will be with him, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. For God did not send his Son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Therefore, as redeemed children of God, we then can fulfill our vocation that God has given to us. We can take his word to the world around us. And you know what? Yeah, you're going to suffer. You're going to be mocked and you're going to be ridiculed. You are going to be hated by those that you thought loved you. You will suffer many things but you will also and even more so experience the love of God, your heavenly Father. As Pastor Valeski wrote, a good soldier will be wholeheartedly devoted to his commanding officer, even if it means suffering to do so. A faithful soldier's reward? He looks for nothing more than the words of commendation from his commanding officer. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. My dear friends in Christ, sharing the gospel is both a blessing and a struggle. Consider the gospel lesson before us today. Jesus Christ, God himself, shared the gospel in his hometown and the people did not believe. Instead of hearing his word and truly listening to his message, they, they looked at his outside and they decided they didn't need anything that he was talking about. Jesus remained faithful. Not for their sake and not even for his own sake, but for the sake of the Heavenly Father so that he might fulfill God's will. I shared with you my own struggles as a pastor not to complain, but to let you know the triumphs and the trials that all pastors go through. For no ministry is without struggles. And yet we continue to proclaim Christ crucified. Not for ourselves, but for him who lived and died for us. So that as you hear, you might believe in him all the more. For he is the one who is most important in all of this. And so to all of you, as you share your Savior with your children, and with your brothers, your sisters, your husbands, wives, parents, friends, co-workers, and so many more, you will have very high highs and you will have very low lows. 
but you must know that Jesus Christ is pleased that you are sharing his word. That you are proclaiming his name and his salvation to the world around you. And through your preaching, some are hearing about Jesus Christ and clinging to him for their salvation. And for that one, for just that one who would hear our words and learn to know and trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation, for that one we suffer as good soldiers of Christ. To God alone be the glory. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join together confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to raise them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially we ask you to be with our, many of our brothers and sisters. Be with Valoris Buboltz who is in the hospital recovering from COVID. Be with Brian Kicker Jr. who is going in Monday for cancer surgery. Be with our brother Gary Hinderman as he recovers from a blood clot at home. Be with uh, Peggy's sister Nancy, who is also going to be going in and undergoing treatment for cancer. Be with Jeff and Peggy while they travel and help their loved ones. Be with them, Lord. They need you now and always. They are undergoing a great deal of strife in their life and they just ask for your love and your comfort that only you can give. Lord, remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us. And yet we come to you today in sadness. We ask you, Lord, to be with the Keel family, the family of Tim Schweiss, and the family of Violet Rosenau, whose maiden name was Ricky, all of whom who have experienced loss. We know, Lord, that you take your saints home. And yet while we remain here, we are sad. We ask you to comfort us, strengthen and encourage us, and love us as only you can. Lord, allow us all to lean on you, not only in these times, but in all times that we need you, and we need your support. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. <clears throat> Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again. Amen. Please be seated as we pause for our offering. If you have not done so already at this time, I invite you to fill out the friendship register located in your pew. Please rise for the service of the sacrament. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. As we prepare to receive the most precious and holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is imperative that we heed St. Paul's words he wrote to the Corinthians. Examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Therefore, let us examine ourselves by asking, am I sorry for my sins? And do I desire to turn away from my sins and live a new life? Do I believe that Jesus, the eternal Son of God, was born a sinless human being? 
and died on the cross to save me from my sins and then rose bodily from the grave to bring me eternal life. Do I believe that I am saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ? Do I believe that the body and blood of the Lord Jesus are truly present with the bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins? If you have answered no to any of these questions, you should refrain from communing and putting yourself at risk of eating and drinking judgment on yourself. If, however, you have answered yes to all of these questions, you have examined yourselves and are ready to receive the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness of all of your sins. We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things, in him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your son's body and blood. Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. At this time, we invite for all communicant members of Emmanuel St. John and the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. If you are not a communicant member of Emmanuel St. John or the Wells, we ask you to refrain from communing until you have spoken to the pastor. During the distribution, the congregation will sing hymns 900, Lift High the Cross, and 672, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence as Time Permits. Come, for all things are now ready.
Please rise. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our closing hymn, hymn 774, God Bless Our Native Land.
Please be seated. Well, good morning again. Thank you all very much for joining us for worship. Um, this Wednesday we do have prairie grazing um, and then worship following that at 7 p.m. Next Sunday we will also have worship with communion. Just to put it on everyone's calendar, on the 21st is when Pastor Joel Tomford will sing happy birthday in a minute. Hold on, Grady. Um, I know, but... Uh, on the 21st is when Pastor Joel Tomford will be here because the family and they are going down to Florida. Um, Katie's brother's wife is due, I think today or tomorrow. So we'll be down there for the baptism and everything else like that, but we'll be gone that weekend of the 21st. But Pastor Joel Tomford from MLC will be here for that. Um, PLS is still looking for a janitor. Pie in the park already happened, so you can kind of ignore that one. MVL is still looking for people. MLC is still looking for people. Um, we do want to point out the ice cream social at Trinity Nicolet on July 24th. There is also the Vacation Bible School. It's, it's that STEM camp that we've been doing for the past couple of years. So if you have kids, grandkids, or anything else like that interested, there is information in the back there um, underneath our cork board or whatever we're calling that. Um, there's a flyer out there for that. Um, two other things I want to point out. They are doing another... Steak feed? Diane says yes. Okay, perfect. So steak feed. Um, steak what? Steak and pork chop feed. Okay, sorry. Okay, yes. Cows and pigs. You can have whatever you want. Um, it got fuzzy when I made copies. I apologize. There are bigger ones in the back. One's even in color on the pedestal back there. So it's the same information, though. I mean, it's next Thursday from 5 to 7. Um, same price, same everything. It's just, it's, it's a good meal. It's a good cause. It's a good time. So if you went last time and you enjoyed it, you can go again. If you didn't go last time and you want to enjoy it, go this time. It is a good time. Um, the other one that I want to announce, and you can read this, um, the, the In Christian Sympathy. Um, I don't know how much of national news. I saw it at different national news things. But um, Professor, Pastor Keel, Reverend Stephen Keel, um, his wife and their daughters, one of their daughters was called home to heaven as well as four other people in that family. Um, there was a big house fire over in Wisconsin, if I remember right, and they were using it, and the family is suffering right now, and yet in Christian hope they know that they're going to see their loved ones, but now is a time of just immense prayer that we can do for them. And so if you have it in your heart, pray for this family. There is some information that we got that we wanted to share with everyone, but I just want you to know um, it's going all around on the Facebook and everything else like that, but by all means, just pray for those who are involved in this. Pray for Tim's family who lost Arv Ar Ar Arvina. Sorry, I was corrected earlier, Arvina. Um, pray for that family too. Pray for everyone as we're, 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 heaven's getting fuller, we're getting lighter. Just ask God to be with us, be with them, and everything else. Um, any announcements that I don't know about before we watch a video and I head out of here? Seeing none. Nancy, remember how to do it? All right, watch this video. I'll be in the back and then people will usher you out. This is the Youth Rally song. Green. 